Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be talking about probably the most minimal Linux operating system that is currently in existence as far as I know of and that is Tiny Core. Now just like Puppy Linux, Tiny Core utilizes um, a CD-ROM to sort of act as a hard drive. Now you can see on the disk there sort of some of the lines that have already been written. Um, I think the entire operating system is something like 15 or 20 megabytes or something and then every time you do something and want to turn the computer off it just writes another line uh, to the CD-ROM. So the CD-ROM acts completely like the hard drive uh, for a tiny core computer. So as you can see I have my computer sort of laid out all over the table here. It's kind of a mess, uh, but I was just trying to set up a simple, quick demonstration for you guys. Um, you know, you just need the basic parts. We've got the power supply back there. Here's the CPU, motherboard. I've got just a simple old-fashioned video card in there connected to my VGA monitor. And of course you will need to have a CD-ROM drive so that you can access your files and boot up every time. Um, but do keep in mind that you're not gonna be accessing the tiny core CD-ROM very often while you're actually in the operating system because it loads all of the contents of the operating system into the memory of the computer. So make sure that you're using a computer that has at least 50 megs of memory. I think the one I have now uh, right here has 128 megs. Uh, so that's that's the kind of computing power you're looking at. Not a super strenuous requirement. So to get started, because I don't have a power button, I am going to actually jump the thing on. Just like that. And you can now see that the fan is whirring away back there. And on the screen, it loads into the BIOS. So it's saying it can't find the CD-ROM. That's because I haven't inserted it yet. It's right here. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that we have the CD-ROM inserted, I'm gonna go ahead and restart the computer. So I'm just gonna jump my pins again here. Just like that. And ta-da! Tiny core is recognizing. So for some reason, I don't know if it's just because the computer that I'm using is really old or, uh, I'm not sure why, but the keyboard and mouse doesn't actually respond until I boot into the operating system. I'm using an ancient CD drive. Boom, and we're in to Tiny Core. And as you can probably hear, CD-ROM is still spinning over there, but it is stopping presently because everything should be loaded into the memory by now. All right, so there's not a whole lot to do in the operating system. Let's zoom in on this toolbar down there. So you've got a few functions. Uh, this one on the left is just to exit. Um, if you're familiar with Mac OS, you will feel right at home with this sort of toolbar at the bottom. Um, we have an editor here which I suppose if you were really in a pinch you could use as a simple word processor but it's really meant to be a text editor um, so let's do a little demonstration of this here And it has a few functions up here. We can 
save the file, open a new one, you know, just very basic stuff. Uh, those are some of the other finding functions. Let's go ahead and close that up. I'm not going to save it. The control panel. Let's see what is in the control panel. Not a whole lot. Uh, the only th personalization thing you can do is to change the color of the wallpaper. And I'm sure if you wanted to figure it out, you could figure out how to put a background image in there. But, I mean, let's just change the background color to green, demonstrate what that is. Click done. Ta-da, we have a green background. View your system stats. Adjust mouse speed. Stuff like that. Let's look at the stats here. You can see the CPU I'm running is ancient. Yeah, it looks like I was wrong about my memory there. For some reason, I was thinking it only had 128 megs of RAM, but it looks like it's got more like 500 megs. Not connected to the internet. Feel free to pause the video and look through any of the stats or processes if you're into that kind of thing. Um, yeah, not a whole lot there. It's really not a very detailed operating system and that's why it is able to be so small. Apps. So I don't have any apps installed because this computer isn't connected to the internet. Uh, but I'm sure you could. Next we've got a quick run program function so you could launch an app that you installed. And there is a disk mounting tool. And as I click that you can hear that my CD drive spinning up there again. But I honestly can't see a use for adding a whole lot of storage space to this thing. Um, I would not recommend using this as your main operating system on your main computer at all. It's really just kind of something to piddle around with and have a bit of fun. And finally we have the terminal. And if you are familiar with Linux at all, I'm sure you know exactly what to do with this. view a quick list of commands here. Those are the built-in commands. And that is it on Tiny Core. Uh, not a whole lot of functionality, but you can use it on a computer that is either outdated or not running very well or you just happen to have laying around and it might make a fun little afternoon project to see what kind of things you can do on it. Uh, like I said, this is just a computer from the early, early 2000s that I just took apart and laid out on the table to get just the basics. And the operating system itself is free. You know, Linux is open source, so you can find it online, download it, burn it to a disk. Here is a more in-depth view of my ancient graphics card for those of you who are interested in that kind of thing. I'll put its exact model number up on the screen, but it looks like it was one of the base models back when, back in its day, which means it probably has literally no graphics processing power at all. Like probably just enough to display a 1028 uh, image on a VGA monitor. My particular computer, if you can see, doesn't actually have VGA or HDMI out on the motherboard. So you actually had to buy a separate graphics card like this one if you even wanted to output an image to an external display back then. Now one of the things I was surprised about, the CPU cooling block is just tiny compared to some of the modern stuff as well as the fan. I can't imagine how effective that little thing must be. It's, it's so small and it doesn't seem to be spinning very fast. So anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, if you found this video interesting, please leave a like, 
And if you want to see more stuff like this, feel free to subscribe.